OK. Uh, so this kind of wraps up the conceptual part of it. Let's uh, move on now to the next set of slides, which are now going through the, the boundary layer equations. What we want to do uh, with boundary layers is maybe understand uh, in, in this specific context how the, uh, you know, the things like Navier-Stokes equations can be simplified. Because as you know, if you go through the derivation, which we'll do, you go through the, the derivation, you end up with these equations, these uh, partial differential equations that become difficult or impossible to solve in many practical applications. So what we want to do is go through, derive those equations, find the simplest possible representation that captures what's happening in a boundary layer, and then use those equations for, uh, say, numerical models or, or as the basis of uh, correlations. So the steps that we're going to go through, uh, well, first, I guess we have three things we need to worry about. Uh, we have to worry about continuity, which is mass conservation, uh, conservation of momentum in every direction that, that we're trying to model, and then conservation of energy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through, uh, draw a differential control volume. It's going to be two-dimensional. Balance some quantity of, of these three. Take the limit of the uh, differential as it goes to zero, and then introduce rate equations to, um, to, to relate some of the quantities. OK, so let's start with uh, conservation of mass. So we're going to go through, do, do all the balances here. Um, stop me as we're going through. I'm, I'm going to try to, I think you've probably seen some of this before, so it'll become, uh, you know, by the end it might be a little repetitive, so I'll try to go a little more quickly, but stop me if, if you have questions. So first what we have is this control volume. So wh what this control volume is depicting is, let's imagine that um, right, the, this, the fluid is kind of going across the screen here. There's a, some surface down here. And we're just capturing some rectangle in the boundary layer, um, some square in the boundary layer, d, dy, dx. And what we're trying to do is look at how fluid is moving through this. So it's, it's not necessarily the case that fluid's coming in one direction. It could be coming from any, any direction. We need to kind of capture that. So first, let's say we have a width dx in this direction. We have a height dy in this direction. And so if I'm worried about conservation of mass, um, I need to think about this in terms of the, the velocities or things that I can kind of measure about this, this problem. So let's draw, let's say, coming in from the left and then leaving from the right. Uh, we're going to have some mass flow, right? Uh, this would be captured as, let's say, the uh, x component velocity, which we're going to call u. So u is in x, and we'll use v for y. Um, so u in x, and then what is my uh, mass? Well, it's going to be the density times the cross-sectional area that's available for flow. So the cross-sectional area in the x direction is going to be uh, dy times some width in the page which we'll call w. So let's write this as uh, rho times w times dy. And that's evaluated at position x. Right? Coming out, we have uh, the same thing that came in, but there's a potential that it could change. Right? There's a potential that there's a, a rate of change through this uh, volume. And uh, we, have to, we have to reflect that in our balance. So coming out would be, again, u times rho times w dy at x plus dx. We do the same thing in the y direction. We're going to have uh, coming in here and leaving here. We would have now the, the y component, which is v times rho times uh, w times dx. Right, w times dx is now my, my available area for flow. w dx, and then that's evaluated at position y. And then at the top, we have v rho w dx y plus dy. OK, so we have captured now the, the flows in and out in both x and y. What else we, will we need to capture in a mass balance? Mass storage. Yes, mass storage. So we would say in, internally here, maybe use a different color. Uh, internally or here, we're going to have a rate of change with, with time, d dt. 
of uh, what's my mass, what's well, going to be the volume times the density. So the volume is w dx dy times rho. Right? That gives me my mass. So the rate of change with respect to time of that mass. Anything else? I think that's it, right? So nothing, no other places where mass could be stored here, uh, where, where mass could be um, in or out. Okay, so let's let's take this and put this in uh, a energy balance. So we have in is equal to out plus stored. Um, let's go through and write it out. Right? We kind of be careful this first time and, and make sure we get it right. Uh, so let's see what's coming in. So in we have in the x direction u rho w dy at x. Uh, we also have in the y direction v rho w dx at y. That's just, those are the two things that are coming in, nothing else. Um, so then that has to equal what's going out. So what's going out is going to be um, u rho w dy at x plus, you know, we have to now expand this term out. Just like we did for, um, you know, for, for Fourier's law and conduction, we have to expand this out. So that's going to look like the following. Um, this becomes uh, that term plus the partial with respect to x of u rho w dy at x times dx. The same thing we did for, for conduction. The in, what's coming in plus the change with respect to x. So, okay, so that's for x. We also have to do the same thing for y. So that becomes uh, v rho w dx at y plus d dy of v rho w, w dx at y times dy. And then finally, we have to add in the storage term, which is partial with respect to time w dx dy times rho. So that's our energy balance. Or sorry, that's our mass balance. Um, I think I said energy balance before. Mass balance, we're talking about mass here. So now we need to go through and we can simplify this, right? There's, there's terms that sort of cancel out. Um, so doing that, I guess we would get rid of this term uh, and the, this term, right? The x and the y terms go away. Um, and then we're left with just the derivatives. So we can write this out, uh, but actually, now that we've, we've done this, let me just be a little bit more careful. So those first terms went away. Now let's look at, at what's left. In every term that's left, we have a w appearing, that's a constant. We have a dx and dy, right? Those are constants for this, right? We're, this control volume has dimensions dx and dy. So those are constants as far as, as, far as it's concerned with the partial derivatives here, right? Um, yeah, so we can basically can cancel all that stuff out. So then we're left with the statement, uh, what, zero is equal to partial of rho times u uh, partial x plus partial of rho times v partial y plus partial rho with respect to time. Um, one other thing, so I'm going to make the assumption for this type of problem as we're going through this, that this is incompressible. If you have a compressible flow, it becomes more complicated. But let's make the assumption that this is incompressible. If that's true, then what happens to this term here? Zero. Yes, rho is not changing by definition. So this term goes away because rho, uh, sorry, d rho dt goes to zero. Incompressible. So if that's true, 
Then I furthermore have a constant row that I can pull out and I'm left with a really simple expression. So my final expression for continuity, which should look familiar, is partial u, partial x, plus partial v, partial y is equal to 0. OK? It's like kind of an anticlimactic uh, thing. You do all this work, and you get this kind of piddly little equation at the end. But it, it's, um, right, it just follows the process. So, and it, and it's, you know, mass ends up being this nice, pretty straightforward relationship. The others, maybe not so much.